Ever since its release at the turn of the millennium, Gran Turismo 2 has been heralded as a seminal racing game for the PlayStation 1. One that took the revolutionary framework of its predecessor and expanded upon it greatly, adding over triple the amount of available cars and double the amount of available tracks. Certainly, it's by all accounts a great game, but not one without its flaws, as should be expected given the fact it was notoriously rushed to be released by Christmas of 1999, which resulted in not only a significant amount of content being cut, but also entire modes from the game, like the drag racing mode. Not to mention the presence of several game-breaking bugs and omissions in the game's original revisions, one such that prevented you from gaining 100% completion in the game simulation mode. Although the game would later be tightened up in terms of stability and content in subsequent regional releases and second shippings, one still can't help but wonder how different the game would look if it was given more initial time to be developed. An interesting question that a member of the Gran Turismo hacking community has taken upon themselves to answer. The hacker, by the name of Pez2K, has created a modification of Gran Turismo 2 that aims to present itself as an unofficial update to the game, fixing much of the pre-existing content as well as adding more on top of it, dubbing the hack as Gran Turismo 2 Plus. The first thing that should be mentioned regarding the plus patch is that it comes in two separate variants. A complete version, which contains all the added content, bug fixes and such, and the other, known as the light version, only contains the bug fixes. Needless to say, I would recommend using the complete version, but I suppose it is good for the purists that a light version exists. The next important thing to note regards the existence of several different versions of each variant of the patch, each covering one of the many different regional and revisional variants of the original game. At first glance, it might seem redundant, and even unrecommendable, to apply the patch to an outdated version of the game. But to remedy this, each version's patch will update the game to be representative of the most up-to-date version of the original game. All of the updates added to the Japanese and US versions revisions will be added to the 1.0 discs through this patch, and likewise all US and Japanese versions will receive updates added to the game in the PAL region. Alongside these updates, GT2 Plus also adds a slew of its own updates. The full change log for this being certainly too long to list here so I shall instead offer a summary of its most significant changes, beginning with restored racing modifications. In Gran Turismo 1, every single available road car, with the exception of the Dodge Concept car, could be modified into a real-world racing variant of the car, or at least turned into something based off a real-world racing variant. And it seems that the devs had originally intended for this to be the case in GT2 as well, However, the clear time restraints that have been placed on the game had required them to scrap many of the racing modifications they had planned, or otherwise convert them into separate available cars. So of course, this mod restores some of those cut racing modifications for the cars. Examples of cars with restored racing modifications include the Citroen Xara 1.8i 16B, the Honda Life T, for its 97 and 98 variant, the Nissan Skyline GTR 4-door, and the Toyota Prius. New and restored car colors. Self-explanatory, I believe. Many cars have received either new colors or cut pre-release colors that were either available for the car in real life or otherwise included in Gran Turismo 1 or either of the two games betas. Examples of cars with added colors include the Castrol Super GT, which has regained its colors from Gran Turismo 1, the Ford GT90, which has received several cut colors, the Mazda RX-7 A-Spec LM Edition, which has received its purple color from GT1 pre-releases, and the Fector WH Twin Turbo, which has received several cut colors. Fixed car stats and physics. 
several cars that had the incorrect statements of its stats or incorrect stats on its being altogether were remedied. Examples of fixes include the 1982 Chevrolet Corvette having its engine power corrected from 230 brake horsepower to 200, as well as having a corrected red line and stock gearing. The 1994 Subaru Impreza WRX had its engine power and torque corrected to 260 PS and freight 1.5 kgm, as well as a corrected weight. And the Venturi El Antique 300 by Turbo had its power corrected from 210 PS to 310 PS, and its weight corrected from 1,250 kilograms to 1,279 kilograms, as well as removed an erroneous drive shaft upgrade. Restoration of cut content from GT1 and GT2 betas. Also self-explanatory, I believe. Content that was present in Gran Turismo 1 and its betas, or Gran Turismo 2's betas, etc., were restored for this game food plus. Cars that were restored include the Honda NSXR LM GT2, the Mercedes-Benz CLK race car, the Buchan S2000, the RUF CR4, and the Volkswagen Polo. Lastly of note is that all car dealerships are now available in all regions, regardless of which version that you play. So for example, you can access Acura and Honda, regardless of whether you're playing the Japanese or American versions of the game. And likewise, you can access Opal and Foxel, regardless of which version you're playing. Now, before I close, I should ask you to bear in mind that this project is limited in what it's capable of. Due to the limitations of what is available to the hacking community, as well as the game's own internal limitations, many who discover the existence of an enhancement project for Gran Turismo 2 would probably hope that it adds features such as the cut Special Stage Route 11 track from Gran Turismo 1, or the Mercedes-Benz CLK GTR car that was seen in pre-release screenshots for the game. However, those two asks are outside the realm of the hacker's capabilities and what he desires to put in the game. The former, because we do not yet have the ability to modify Gran Turismo 1 tracks to work with 2, and the latter because we have yet to find a pre-release build or any data whatsoever for the cut car in the game. The mod itself has run into struggles regarding how much content it can add due to space limitations. And perhaps unsurprisingly given what I just said, the hacker Pez2K has no intention whatsoever of restoring the drag racing mode at least until any evidence that it was truly worked on, i.e. having code for it and such appears. But in spite of these issues, for what it is able to correct and add to the game, and what it does do to polish the game up, I can pretty safely say that Gran Turismo 2 Plus is in fact the best way to play Gran Turismo 2.